So I wanted to do a little video on some of the anti-aging treatments that I do at Make Cosmetics. Um, there's two sort of treatments that I do. Um, one is the non-surgical technique, um, botulinum toxin, so anti-wrinkle injections. And then the other one is the microneedling technique, which is obviously not injections, but we are still puncturing the skin uh, with needles. Um, I know when it comes to anti-aging there's so much out there and you kind of it can be a bit overwhelming um you know you want to know what the risks are and how well things work how long they're going to take if they're permanent or not permanent um i know a lot of people they're kind of a bit dubious when it comes to botox and they think oh you know i don't want to start botox yet or should i start botox now um, so I wanted to have a little chat, chat about that and if you're not a fan of injectables and you don't want to go down that route Then I wanted to talk about the other treatments I do here, which is the microneedling facial which would also be really beneficial um, to help reduce the, uh, the aging process So I'll start on the subject with um, Botulinum toxin which is commonly referred to as Botox. So Botox is a brand name for botulinum toxin um, there's other brands like Bocachor, which is the one that I use, um, Azula, Dysport. These are all brands of botulinum toxin. Um, so yeah, so obviously this is an injectable treatment. It kind of tends to last around three to four months. The longer that you've been having it, the less you kind of need it. Um, and the longer you can go in between without having it done. So I kind of go around six months, seven months before I have some more. Um, and that's because I started at quite a young age. I was 21 when I started having Botox. Um, and I actually, I kind of first had it because other people were having it and I wanted to try it. Um, it actually had a really positive effect on eczema that I used to have around my eyes and it really cleared my eczema. And, you know, I'm not a medical professional so I don't know what, you know, how that kind of worked but I just know that when I had Botox um, my eczema went from around my eyes. So then I kind of carried on having it um, as not as just for an aesthetic reasons but for kind of medical reasons as well. Um, I know that it's used in other areas of medicine, you know, for people for migraines, it can be used for sweating, it's used for bladder problems, all sorts of things. Um, but obviously Botox is diluted into a really small amount and we use um, type A and B um, for aesthetic and medic medicine purposes. Um, I don't know if you know, you probably do know, um, botulinum toxin type H is the most poisonous substance uh, in the world. Um, so yeah, and that, that, I think that can kind of freak people out as well, but obviously we're not using um, that strain. Botox is um, a bacteria. It's derived from a bacteria, it's a byproduct, um, which can be found in like soil um, and stuff like that. I know it sounds, when you actually talk about it, you're a bit like, what the hell, what is this stuff? But So Botox, it stops the signals from the nerves to the muscles, and that's what causes that paralyzing effect. Um, with the results, um, you'll see them work between three to 10 days. Um, here I offer a top up at 14, 14 days. So at two weeks, you'll get the peak, um, you'll have the peak sort of paralyzation from the Botox. So that's the kind of way you'll be at. And then if there's any little areas that need tweaking, then we can just do those little areas. Um, some people, they get a bit more uh, movement around here. So if you don't like that, you know, some people do like that, then we can um, just um, blast those little areas with some really small units. Um, so then, and then after that, the results will just gradually wear off over a period of time and then be fully weared off between three to four months. Um, Botox is like a one out of 10 on the pain threshold. Um, we don't numb the area, it's not really necessary. I mean, some people might. It's over so quickly. Um, I mean, there's a few injections, but it depends on each individual. Some people need more injections, some people need less, depending on the severity of the wrinkles. Um, so Botox, it stops the movement of dynamic lines. So when I raise my eyebrows, when I frown, it stops those dynamic movements. Um, it can help soften static lines, but it's predominantly used to stop dynamic movement, which in turn obviously um, creates those static lines. Um, and that is why a lot of people do use it as a preventative and do have it, um, start having it from a younger age because then you're kind of less likely to have those severe wrinkles when you're older. Um, but if you did go, did you want to use it um, when you're sort of like 30, 40, or when you have them wrinkles, it can help soften those, but you know, it might not get rid of them. 
So as botulinum toxin is a toxin, um, everyone that comes to me to have that, they have to have a compulsory medical check with a nurse prescriber. Um, so I have one on board at May Cosmetics and you'll see the nurse prescriber for like a 15 minute consultation and she'll do a medical check to make sure um, you're fit and healthy and well to have the procedure. Um, and then I can order the Botox, but in this, I, I use Bocature, so that's a botulinum toxin brand I use. Um, and then I can order that and then I can administer it at a day and time that suits you. But everyone must see my nurse prescriber first. Um, that's the way um, it's regulated and that's the way it's safe for me to provide the treatment. So I'm gonna also do a written blog as well. I did a little poll on my Instagram, um, asked people, you know, do you prefer vlogs? Do you prefer vlogs? And I think I had like 89% of people prefer a vlog, um, but I know some people they like to read. So I'm gonna write all the information about um, botulinum toxin um, and my other microneedling treatment on my blog page on my website, which is www.makersmanics.com. Um, so then you can have a read of that as well. And I'll, I'll, I'll do some pre and post care as well. So for um, the post care for Botox, well pre care you want to kind of avoid sort of um, blood thinning medication only if you, they're prescribed. If they're prescribed by a doctor, then obviously seek your doctor's advice first. Um, don't stop taking anything that you're you know prescribed, like aspirin and stuff, of if it's high doses. Um, the only reason we ask to stop sort of using blood thinning medication and anti-inflammatories is because it thins your blood and you can bleed more, bruise more. Um, um, the other thing is try not to drink alcohol the night before because this one could help you um, bruise and bleed more as well because it thins the blood. So you kind of want to make sure you're really fit and healthy when you have Botox because it, you can afterwards, um, you can, it can give you a bit of a headache. I tend to get headaches um, after I've had Botox, which they do, they do subside after about 24 hours or so. Some people are fine. Um, but yeah, so make sure you're um, fit and healthy because this is a toxin. Your lymph, your lymph nodes are kind of like working like, oh, what is this? Like, so it kind of everything can get a bit heightened. You might feel like a little bit worse. So you might feel like if you've got a cold or you feel a bit fluey, then I would definitely avoid Botox because it can just kind of make that feel a bit worse. So make sure you're fit and well before you have the treatment. Post-treatment care, you want to avoid laying down um, for around four hours after to make sure there's no migration of the botulinum so it stays in the muscles that it's been targeted. Um, I'd again avoid alcohol for 24 hours, blood thinner medication. Um, yeah, and that's the kind of the main aftercare with that really. Like I said, you might experience some headaches and stuff. Um, but yeah, there's quite a lot of information there about Botox and I hope that's kind of helped if you had any questions or wanted to know anything. Um, so that's a lot on that subject. So um, as well, when you come visit me, you'll see the nurse prescriber, we'll discuss which areas as well you wanna, wanna have and you'll also get um, your aftercare cards, which I give to people as well, which has um, the aftercare written down so you don't think, oh, how long have I got not, not lie down for? So it's all written on here. Um, I didn't discuss areas that I treat. So here I treat um, the frown line, the forehead, your crow's feet area, um, people that have a gummy smile, so if you smile and you can see your gums, we do a couple of little injections here and that can help to stop that muscle movement and reduce that gummy smile. Um, smoker's lines is another thing that, area that I treat. Um, the mass eater muscle here, um, that can help if you're a teeth grinder, um, so that can help reduce that. Uh, oh, bunny lines here, if you squeeze your nose like this, you get some bunny lines. And we also do the platysma bands, so these bands here, which is a lovely face. So yeah, this can help soften, it can help soften that with Botox. Also, I do the hyperhidrosis, which is using botulinum toxin under the arms for people that get sweaty armpits. So summer's coming up, if you think, oh God, I'm gonna be out a lot in the sun, going on holiday, um, we can use Botox uh, for underarm and that will last for around six months. Um, so yeah, they're the other areas that I treat. I think that's all of them, yeah. But yeah, I'll write all that down in the blog as well. So if you're not a fan of injectables, you don't want to go down that route, um, but you kind of, you're noticing that you're kind of aging a bit. Um, the other option for you is facials. Um, these are really good. I'm, I'm a fan of like um, quite hardcore facials. Like I don't kind of, you know, these, these ones where it's just like a little, nice little cleanse. Um, 
I prefer something that I can really feel and see the results like straight away or if not like when my when my skin repairs itself um, so I offer the Miso Plus which is a micro needling concept um, I use my semi-permanent makeup machine it's the six point cartridge needles um, they're metal needles and we just go into the skin at 0.3 millimeters deep um, causing like slight trauma to the skin so you get like a little bit of bleeding um, but that's good because we know we're in the right um, the right depth of the skin and this um, this is really great because I use different serums. I use um, a 15% acid peel first, so that gets rid of all those dead skin cells on your face, um, gives me sort of fresh skin to work with. Then we do the microneedling, I use like advanced cellular um, skincare products, which are really um, rich and high in HA, um, HA, so that's the same thing we use in dermal filler. So we use that and put that into the skin, which helps plump out any fine lines, acne scarring, uh, anything like that. So it's really good for anti-aging and really good for whole skin rejuvenation. Um, the results are permanent results, permanent changes in the skin. Um, it helps to stimulate collagen and elastin. Um, we don't use numbing cream for it. It can be like a little bit uncomfortable um, in some areas, tends to be on the bonier parts of the face, um, like the forehead um, and round here on the chin, but it's all like, it's all done pretty quickly. So we only go over one area once. So it's not like I'm working backwards and forwards on the same area. So with the facial, I mean, they kind of, you see the result, well, you see the results straight away. Afterwards, you'll be a little bit red, it might be a little bit sore, and that could be like that for about 24 hours. You might see some bits of like flaky skin, or you might look a bit, well, yeah, red. Uh, I do use a cooling face mask at the end, which is really nourishing to the skin. Um, but yeah, I would say have one in the kind of afternoon, evening. Um, with, with the micro-needling ones, you do two facials with the micro-needling, obviously the downtime's a little bit more because um, you're gonna have more trauma to the skin. Um, with the meso, meso skin, the other one that I do, it's a plastic needle, which is really good for like just a quick lunchtime um, facial. If you've got an event to go to the next day and you wanna have glowing skin, um, then that's the one I would go for. If you want more permanent changes to the skin, I would go for the micro needling ones. It's the same concept. It's just one of them is plastic needles and one of them is metal needles. The metal needles, um, the results you can be seen are straight away and after 28 days, permanent. And then the, um, the other one, the plastic needle, which is the Miso Glow and Go, um, that one's more of a lunchtime one, can have it before if you've got a wedding the next day or if you've got like an event, um, then that's the one I would go for because you're not gonna have too much downtime. You're just gonna be red for like a few hours and then that will subside. So with this facial as well, what's great about it is you can use it not just on the face, but you can use it on the neck, on the hands, on stretch marks. Um, it's really good for those that just want to look overall fresher and younger. I mean, obviously with Botox, we're targeting specific muscles, but this, this makes changes to the skin and the skin's texture and tone. Um, so they're both, to be honest, they would work really well together. You'll have the, um, the reduction in dynamic lines using the Botox, um, and therefore you'll have slow down the aging, the aging signs by um, eliminating that movement of the muscle, which creates the static lines. Or, and if you use the facial as well, um, you're giving all of your skin, like replenishing it, re revitalizing it, um, rejuvenating it, um, yeah, and so you have like, the whole skin will look great as well. So they're really good to work um, together if you can. But it, like I said, if you're not a fan of Botox, microneedling will be a great a great um, alternative um, that's not an injectable. Um, it's that, I'd say it's a little bit more pain, well, I wouldn't even say it's painful, it's like mildly uncomfortable. Um, but again, it's over really quickly. Um, I'm gonna, obviously in the blog, um, write, write basically everything I've said in here, some key points, um, which can help you kind of decide which of which of these treatments you'd prefer or if you wanna try both. Um, like I said, with the facial, you kind of wanna wait maybe a month or so. We can't always do the 15% acid peel every time because we don't wanna damage the skin. So we'll do that and then maybe sort of four months later, we can do another acid peel. Um, but these are the these are the things that I offer. Um, I'll also do a video probably of 
um, performing the uh, microneedling on myself so you can see the results what I look like before um, straight after and um, so this facial is really targeted at anti-aging kind of everything at my clinic um, in terms of like dermal filler Botox um, and the facials are all kind of anti-aging slowing down the aging process um, yeah so I think that's all I've got to say on this I'll probably I'll probably remember something else in a minute um, but yeah the, that's a lot of information there for you regarding the treatments. One thing I would suggest to everyone in regards to their skin, which I'm not great at this, so I need to take my own advice here, is to wear sunscreen and not be a sun worshipper because I get a lot of people in um, that have these lines and damaged skin from years of sunbathing. I feel like now we're all a bit more aware of the damage that the sun causes, but even if you wear an SPF during the day in the winter, this will help um, help your skin as well. So always wear SPFs and look after your skin when you're younger too, because if you don't, you're kind of, the results you'll see when you're older. So make sure you look after your skin.